at Newport Velodrome for Ollie's Hour Record. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, has cycling become an arms race, with bikes and components out of reach of the average person on the streets? We shall discuss. We're also going to look at how your alarm clock could affect your cycling performance, at a new round the world record attempt, and Ollie's attempt to break Eddie Merckx's hour record. This week in the world of cycling, we learnt that Naira Quintana is back to his best. He absolutely annihilated the rest of the field on stage three of the Tour de la Provence up to Chalet Renard on Mont Ventoux, finishing almost a minute and a half ahead of everybody else. We also learnt that World Bicycle Relief has now handed out over half a million bikes to those in need of the most over the last 15 years. They have. Uh, what a milestone that is for them. Uh, now, as you know, World Bicycle is a charity very close to our hearts. I've been over to see firsthand the work they do and the positive effect that those bikes have on the recipients, so we really couldn't be happier for them. Finally, this week we learnt that with the best that modern technology has to offer, Ollie Smashed. didn't break. Eddie Merckx's hour record. Yeah. We don't actually know yet, do we? Because he's not even started his attempt as we record this week's GCN show. Uh, but what we do know is that even if he doesn't beat Eddie's mark, he should get reasonably close. And since not even Ollie would compare his athletic ability to Merckx, it is proof you can buy yourself a lot of speed. It is. Although he wouldn't compare himself to Merckx though, it does appear, Manon, that he does consider himself an elite athlete. When you've worked with other top athletes, other top athletes, other top athletes. So many comments about that line underneath last week's GCN show. Anyway, you are right, Manon, in that you can buy speed, but it costs a lot of money, doesn't it? Cycling's never been cheap if you want to buy a top-end bike, but it feels like in 2020, those top-end bikes are costing more than they ever have. And so the question is, has it become too expensive and therefore unaffordable for the average man, woman or child in the streets? I think if you look specifically at top-end bikes, the answer is probably yes in some ways. I was thinking back to 1995 when I was 15 and you were almost born, Manon. I used to lust after a bike from Trek called the OCLV 9000, a beautiful carbon mountain bike. At the time, it retailed for around about £2,500. And when you take into account inflation, that's the equivalent in 2020 of £5,000. And that was well out of reach for me and my parents, really. And now you can get off the peg bikes for over £10,000. Mm. Which is the most I've ever spent on a car. Me too. But anyway, effectively, top end bikes have doubled in price over the last 25 years. They have. The question is though, are they twice as good? Actually, that's a really difficult one to answer. But what I would say is that a 1500 pound bike in 2020 is better than a three grand bike was back in the day. Trickle down technology. Exactly, yeah. And due to UCI equipment rules, you can now ride a bike that is better than a professional bike rider, which probably wasn't the case in your day, Dan. All right, no, you're right though, it wasn't, because until quite recently, pro riders often used custom equipment, didn't they, that you just couldn't get your hands on if you're a member of the public. But that's changed recently, and in 2020, a bike manufacturer sponsoring a big pro team wants those riders on bikes that the public can buy, which makes complete sense, doesn't it? And dare I say it, this trend started with the Cervelo test team. I know, I'm sorry, uh, but it's true. We had to ride bikes that were available to buy in your local bike shop. And in fact, unless you were a leader on that team, you had to use an S2 and not an S3 frame set. So I presume you were on a S2. Yeah, you presume right. <laughs> that continues to this day. Last year, AG2R were spotted using Shimano Altegra on their Eddie Merckx race bikes. And in 2018, the action development team were using, wait for it, aluminium specialized bikes. No. Aluminium, that was thought to be dead when carbon came along. But they were still very successful on them, weren't they? Yeah. So the question then, are you losing out on a bit of speed if you don't have a really top-end bike? Undoubtedly you are, a little bit. But to quote Lance Armstrong, it's not all about the bike. And in fact, if you plonk Egan Bernal or Naira Quintana on a 300 pound road bike, they're still going to outclimb every amateur out there. And most pros. But you don't need to spend a load of money to enjoy riding your bike. You might not be able to afford to, or you just might not want to. Exactly. Um, but I guess there are other, let's say more affluent members of the cycle community who might get enjoyment from having the best that money can buy. Just in the same way that other people are like that with cars or clothing. Or watches. 
Precisely, they will tell the time, don't they? Yeah. I guess where this can become a bit more controversial is when you start talking about children's bikes. And I'm gonna be quite hypocritical on this because where I'm within the cycling industry, my younger son Jude is fortunate enough to have a top-end cyclocross bike which costs well in excess of a thousand pounds retail. And I know that most parents out there are not going to be willing to or be able to afford to buy a bike of that nature, especially when they're gonna outgrow it in a case of, well, years, maybe even months. But whilst he's fortunate from that point of view, he's also unfortunate Jude because he's got my genes. And so he is regularly beaten by other children on bikes that cost a fraction of the price. It's an interesting topic, isn't it? But we'd like to throw it out to you at home. Do you ever get annoyed with how much bikes cost? Do you wish you could spend more? Hmm. Or could you not care less? Are you happy to just go out riding on whatever you can afford? As ever, you can let us know in the comments section down below. I think there'll be quite a big debate about that one. Hmm. Right, we are now going to hand over to Ollie, who I doubt ever wants to see a pair of wheels again in his life, if he's gone deep enough in his hour record. Uh, here is his last vlog. <laughs> Just done the hour record. I'm absolutely wrecked. I don't feel like I can walk upstairs. That's <laughs> the hardest thing I've done on a bike by an absolute mile. Absolutely savage. It, it feels like nothing else. That it's so un unrelenting compared to anything else you do on a bike. You don't realise on the road like those little rests you get, how much they count for. Uh, my legs are just wrecked. Um, you know, I've, I've not I've not beaten Eddie Merckx, but I feel massively proud because. I just gave that everything and just, you know, I have destroyed myself. <laughs> I definitely, I need like to use disabled access. <laughs> yeah, I do. I need a lie down. Oh, I'm gonna go get some food and a massage. I think I'm wrecked. Oh, right. Good day. It is now time for your weekly GCN inspiration. Uh, this being where you submit your inspirational cycling photos and videos to the GCN app, which you have to download if you haven't done so already. We pick out our favorite three each week and they all win a prize. So without further ado, winning a stainless steel bottle in black as third place this week is... Milton Lahoz on his track Madone and last morning ride before the snow in Toronto. That looks stunning. Very doesn't nice, it? Yeah. Although I'm imagining very cold. Uh, Canadians always telling us how harsh their winters are. Mm. To be honest, I'm sick of winter. Me We've too. had two storms over the last two weekends here mm. in the UK, haven't we? And uh, so we're looking forward to some warmer sunshine, which is why we've chosen these top two. Uh, well done to you, that bottle is on its way, but in second place this week and receiving a Strive t-shirt bundle is... EDUQB. Yeah. In sunny Chile, best way to do a 33k uphill road and it's always awesome to get out here in the mountains. Yeah, no matter how many times you've done it. And I would agree. Well, I mean, if we had anything like that near us, I'd be doing it, it pretty lovely. much every day. It looks lovely yeah. and it looks warm as well, it does. doesn't Even it? Even though there's some snow in the background. True, but I'm betting that that is shorts and short sleeves weather right there, yeah. which I'm dying for at the moment. Can't wait for our GCN event in Mallorca in late March. Hopefully the weather will be good there. Anyway, top prize this week and winner of a Word Shadow t-shirt, Word Shadow t uh, sweatshirt and a baseball cap is Techno Cyclista, who's been exploring a new area for gravel riding. Only a little more than an hour ride from the busy center of Madrid, La Laguna del Campillo, which makes you feel very close to nature. How that stunning nice. is that? I tell you what, that must have been a still day, mustn't yeah. it? There's not a ripple. Look at in the that reflection lake. on the water. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, nice. Another bucket list ride, I think, there. Uh, right, thanks again for all of you who submitted your photos over the last week. Don't forget to get involved over on the GCN app. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we'll start with the news that the type of alarm you wake up to could affect your riding. What alarm do you use, Dan? Uh, at home, I've got a radio alarm clock that I use to wake me up. Radio one? Uh, no, I'm a bit too old for that. Yeah, I so. was radio two actually, but I've since followed Chris Evans' breakfast show over to Virgin Radio. When I'm not at home though, I use my phone. Oh to yeah, wake me up. What, what alarm? You want to hear the ringtone? Yeah. Uh, well, handy, I've got my phone just down here. Uh, it is called Spring. Hmm, quite melodic, isn't it's it? Not too bad. <laughs> well, this is mine. No. Yeah. That's harsh. Oh. Don't keep it going. Sorry. <laughs> Wakes me up, though. Hmm. Well, at least I thought it did. A recent study from the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology found that a melodic alarm was a lot more effective at waking you up than an abrupt alarm. 
Sounds like you better change yours. I better. Man, yours is yeah. the most abrupt alarm I've ever heard in my life. Worth taking into consideration though, isn't it? Because apparently the melodic arm uh, will see you fully awake a bit earlier, and therefore if you're doing an early morning training session, it's going to be more effective, isn't it? Although I have to say, doesn't matter how melodic and tuneful your alarm is when you first hear it, there comes a point when you've had one too many early wake up calls that you hate it. Very it? true. It is. Uh, moving on, do you ever use your phone whilst you're out cycling? Yeah, I do. I've been known to take the odd selfie when I'm out on my bike, when I've stopped though. Oh, good, yeah. glad to hear it. Uh, well, some of you who watch the GCN show regularly might remember that last year, in July, the Dutch brought in a new law which banned cyclists from using their mobile phones whilst they were cycling. Well, since then, they have handed out 21,000 fines to cyclists caught breaking that law, and each of those got a fine of up to 95 euros plus costs. That's an expensive selfie. It is. Moral of the story being, don't use your phone when you're riding a bike. Moving on. How long would it take you to ride around the world? Blimey, that was a change of subject. Um, not really considered it before. Probably will never do it, but in answer to that, I would say, I don't know, it's gonna, it would take me a very, very long time. Likewise. But Scottish cyclist Helen Langridge is attempting to break the women's world record for riding around the world. And she's attempting to do it in less than 124 days. And that record is held by friend of the channel, Jenny Graham. It is indeed. And in fact, Helen's hoping to do it in 110 days. Now that journey is 18,000 miles. So she's reckoning an average of 15 to 16 hours on the bike every single day. Although that said, it sounds odd, but she has actually done this before. She has already ridden around the world, hasn't she? She has. In 2016, Helen uh, went on a Tinder date with Mike, and on their second date, they decided they were going to ride around the world together. And on the journey, they got married. So, if you're ever wondering what to do for your first date, just ride around the world together. That really would be make or break for a relationship, <laughs> wouldn't it? Now, Dan, have you ever wondered if you could power a gym using nothing but a gym bike and your very own hard work? Not really. This is another question in life that I haven't pondered much, although it was clearly on the minds of researchers Mustafa Isan and Vimal Visvanathan because they have produced a paper on this very topic. Basically, they set up an indoor static bike and tried to harness the energy from it. They found that you had to ride at 300 watts to harvest 22% of the energy, and that's around 66 watts. Which they reckon is enough to power 20% of an American college gym, don't they? They are planning to carry out more research on the topic, but it does raise the question if one day gyms will be partially powered by gym goers. You'd hope so. Wouldn't you? In fact, I'm quite surprised no one's managed to do that already. Also, imagine if somehow you were able to harvest a percentage of the energy produced by Zwifters each and every day. I bet there's a That'd lot a there. Lot. Right, we shall finish cycling short. It's a real feel-good story that we saw over on bicycling.com. Uh, so a charity over in Indianapolis, which is called Kids Building Bikes, which is... Well, doing exactly what the title suggests, really. It is teaching children how to build bikes, how to maintain bikes, the anatomy of a bike, how to be safe and be seen on bikes, amongst many other things. That is over a course which consists of eight two-hour lessons. And if the child passes, they get to have their very own brand new bike. At the end. How cool is that? Really cool. And also, that bike that they get given, they built themselves. And of course, they know how to maintain that bike as well. Brilliant stuff. Next up, it is Hack. Forward slash bodge of the week. First show and first go. Well done, man. Uh, anyway, this is the point at which you submit your hacks and bodges over on the GCN app, ready for next week's show, uh, because you've already been voting on the previous week's hacks and bodges, and that's what we're going to go through now. Uh, so first up, we've got this one from... Kev C. Couldn't find a bike stand anywhere in Abu Dhabi. Not sure if anyone does their own maintenance here. So improvised with some bamboo and some paracord, saved a fortune and worked a treat. I don't know what to say on this one. Um, needs must, and if he couldn't find a bike stand anywhere, yeah. that's probably the best that he could do over there. It doesn't look very stable, where if you know, you're know doing maintenance to your bike, it's just gonna be rocking around. Well, to be fair, he doesn't look like he's got particularly far with his bike build there, does he? A lot of work um, to do. But yeah, he still needed it. I'm, go I'm gonna go hack, what are you saying? Bodge. Really? Yeah. Harsh. Sorry. First hack of bodge, man on saying bodge. Uh, right, well, public is saying hack. 57% said hack, 43% said bodge. Was it close? 
It was close, yes. Uh, right, moving on, we had this one from Josh7. Kind of a tool bike, really. A lot going on in that photo. My question with all of these things is why? Anyway, bike scooter hybrid came across this unique design in Vancouver. Must be interesting at traffic lights. Well, yeah, you'd, you'd want to be a track stand master coming towards a set of traffic lights. That's a bike for Connor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, get, I suppose you could put the saddle up a little yeah, bit more. It's just about fit in there. Mm. What are you saying on that one? Bodge, I just don't don't understand why. No, looks like he's yeah. got steps there to get up to the saddle, but yeah, why? Uh, well, the public are in agreement with you this time. 70% said bodge. Right, up next. Uh, the pretty visitor. Skello Velo. <laughs> <laughs> this one in from the pretty visitor. Uh, Krakow seems to become in the unofficial home of Hacker Bodge. Skello bike, anyone? It's another one where you just think, why? And in fact, when you zoom in and look a bit closer, uh, although it looks neat from far away, it looks more like well done paper mache. It's a good it? effort. I'd struggle to make anything like that. You're saying hack then, are you? Yeah, there must be a reason behind it. Well, I'm going to say. Fancy dress. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say bodge. Well, it's certainly a head turner as you uh, ride through the streets, isn't it? Anyway, uh, you at home have deemed it a hack just. 52% of you voted hack, 48% voted bodge. Uh, I like the comment from James, actually. A real bone shaker. Just the kind of level of pun that we like here on the GCN show. Uh, right, next up, we had this from Aya Luke. Uh, so he wrote, my friend Joe's poor broken bike on the tour out to uh, right at the start of the sea to Mountains Trail to the Bridge of Nowhere. 55k is a very wet and slippery single track with a derailleur cage broken. Repairs made with a borrowed tent peg managed to get to Wangani on this total distance of around 30 kilometers. Well, that actually, I think, is the definition of a hack, really. When yeah. you're out in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere, no shops anywhere nearby, that is exactly the sort of hack and maintenance that you need to do out on the trail to get you home again. Yeah. That's a very good hack. Right, well, well it's Ooh. reasonably close yeah. actually at home. 59% saying hack and 41% saying bodge. Uh, right, finally this week. Ron Alfonso, cleaning the chain hack. Mm, simple one. Uh, now you're, simple. you're new to, to GCN Manon. Presumably you've watched most of the previous 360 episodes of the GCN show. I'm working my way through them. Yeah, I thought yeah. you might be. Uh, anyway. I am a big fan of a chain keeper and that is exactly what that is. Just far easier when you've got your bike in a bike stand and you want to degrease your chain. Not sure what your thoughts thoughts are on chain keepers. I don't own one. No? No. I've got plenty that I can I can, yeah. I can sell you one at trade price. Thanks. <laughs> As we're both within the industry. <laughs> uh, what do you reckon then? Hack or bodge for a chain keeper? Um, it does make sense, so a hack, yeah. Well done, Manon. Uh, yeah, completely disagreeing with Sai, who hates. Does he? He hates chain oh. keepers, yeah. Partly because we had on one every week for about a year, I think. Uh, so I'm definitely going hack, and so are 54% of you. Brilliant, well done Ron. Uh, well done to all of you who have uh, posted your hacks and bodges over to the GCN app. Don't forget to get involved uh, ready for next week's show so that people can get voting for the following week's show. Next up, caption competition. We give you a photo and you leave your best captions in the comment section below or on the app. And the winner, which we'll pick, will receive an elite water bottle. They will indeed. Uh, last week's photo was this one of Oscar Sevilla over at the presentation of the Tour Columbia 2.1. And our winner is Bass Slaughter, who put a caption, Team Bahrain Marino reveals new kit. <laughs> See what you did there, Bass. Uh, get in touch on Facebook with your address and we'll get that elite water bottle sent out to you. This week's caption photo for you to get your teeth stuck into is this one of Adam DeVos, the Canadian national champion from Rally Cycling, over the end of the finish line of the Walter Mercia Stage 1. Uh, I can normally get people started, Manon. Well, uh, someone get some help! We need a melodic alarm to wake this man up. Uh, sorry, Sai si, um, si normally laughs a little bit at that point. Oh, he's clearly a, a better actor than I am. <laughs> Right, um, yeah, leave your best captions in the comment section below. This is the part of the show where we're about to tell you what's coming up on GCN over the next week, but before we do so, five this week of our favorite comments from the previous videos. First up, underneath We Need to Talk About Concussion, brought to you by Connor over the weekend. This from Brian Messmer. We need to have a discussion about concussion. It was clearly a missed opportunity. We're not clever enough to think of titles like that. Uh, well, Manon probably is, but uh, we, might, we, might, we might change it 
uh, under your suggestion, Brian. Next up, underneath Ollie's fastest error upgrade video from the artful bodger, Katie's earned her money that day. Apparently, she's now in therapy. <laughs> I mean, you're close to being to needing therapy because yeah. you, you watched that video early on this morning, yeah. didn't you? No one needs to see that. Yeah, Ollie's strutting his stuff in his bib shorts. Um, yeah, yeah, get well soon, Katie. Sorry about that. Uh, under that same video, Paul Corby says, Ollie says you get scanned in your pants, then proceeds to wear a set of bib shorts. Is it fair to assume Ollie wears bib shorts as underwear at all times? Could well be. I really hope not. No, I do as well, it's but I would, would not put it past him. Yeah, true. Now that he's um, actually, at this point, probably finished his hour record, we need to find out how he's got on. I've not beaten Eddie Merck. Uh, maybe he'll uh, go back to normal underwear. Uh, underneath top 10 places to ride before you die, uh, Susek wrote, Jeremy Powers was in Los Angeles, which is most definitely not Northern California. Whoops. Uh, yet another mistake we made here at GCN to add to the growing list. Mm, who's that, o Ollie and Hank, I think, did that video? Probably, yeah. Yeah, we'll blame it on them. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Underneath last week's show from Scott Bolton, I'd like to see my fitness making a comeback. Yeah, we were asking you what you would like to see making a comeback in the world of cycling last week. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of us would be in agreement with you there, Scott. Right, coming up on GCN over the next week, uh, we shall start with Wednesday, where we're going to teach you how to do a Zwift race. Won't be me, because I've never actually raced on Zwift no. in my life. I am getting more motivated on the bike, though, so I'm going to watch yeah. that in case I want to do one, once I've got my indoor okay. setup there again. Uh, Thursday, we have got our top 10 cycling Instagram accounts, which you wrote and presented, Matt. I did, yes. Uh, so presumably, yeah. I'm in there. Get a few uh, more followers on Instagram over the next week. <coughs> on Saturday, Jerry Powers goes fat biking with 10 King. And on Saturday is for mental or physical. Connor looks into what one might be holding us back. And on Sunday we find out if Ollie broke Eddie Merckx's record. Mm. Hopefully we'll manage to keep that quiet. I know yeah. there are a lot of paparazzi outside so it might reach the tabloids here in the UK mm. before Sunday. I've not beaten Eddie Merckx. But regardless, it uh, should be a very interesting video. Monday of course is the racing news show over on the GSN Racing channel. Speaking of which, two big races go on this week and we've got worldwide highlights of both the Volta Algarve and the Volta Andalusia. Amongst the names taking part, Remco Evenepoel, Mathieu van der Poel, Mikel Lander and a whole host of others, so make sure you don't miss that. Almost the end of the show, which means it's time now for Extreme Corner, which this week is the first lap of Ollie's hour record. start of an hour of pain now. Your experience on the track, man, on judging by that first lap, what do you reckon? I think it'll be very close. I think he'll do it. Yeah. You reckon he'll do yeah. it? Confidence in Ollie Bridgewood. Yeah. Uh, well, make sure you tune in to find out on Sunday. I've not beaten Eddie Merckx. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Thanks for joining us, man. It's your first okay. ever GCN show. Uh, it's been brilliant. We'll see you next week. <laughs>